So, the algorithm is something like this. So, for each information set of the last acting player, determine the sub extensive form which is necessarily static that includes all players that have the same information as this information set ok. So, so step a step 1 then step 2 solve this static game this static game step 3 replace this sub extensive form with a branch of equilibrium actions. equilibrium action of the first acting player. In the sub extensive form. repeat until you are left with branches of the first acting Now, here is an here is an important thing. So, so you, did you get the procedure essentially you start with the last information set its parent will be so the since every player has access to all the information of uh, uh, that its precedent had you would either have the additional information in which case the the immediate parent node would be a singleton node or you would have the same information as the parent and you keep recursing like this then you will get to eventually a a sub extensive form where it starts from a particular node and then you have uh, uh, a singleton is you have a one information set and then so in that sub extensive form is going to be static solve that sub extensive form as a static game Re replace just get rid of that sub extensive form completely so you know see for example this sub extensive form is going to be is a static game replace this with the equilibrium action of the first acting player of this sub extensive form Okay. So, in this sub extensive form player 2 is the first acting player and suppose he was playing m in, in equilibrium replace this whole thing with m. Okay. So, just so it is like player 2 now is at this node and he is playing m and, and put in the payoff for uh, equilibrium payoff at this at this node is this clear. So, then player 2 would then is it would be as if player 2 has two options to play l or to play m we have done something like this before also. So, essentially player 2 has to ask whether he has to get into this game or get into this game ok. So, keep doing this and eventually you will come to a stage where you have only the first acting player of the actual full game and just actions for him and you will have payoffs listed and you have to then pick the optimal player. Is this clear? So, that the uh, the resulting thing would would defines for you an equilibrium of the of the dynamic game. Okay, gives you an equilibrium of the dynamic because at every information set 
you would have specified an action for each player. Now, what is peculiar about the uh, the kind of ah okay okay two two points. First is what if you solve this static game, okay, and it turns out that there are multiple equilibria here. So suppose for example this static game was like a deer rabbit game, and there are multiple equilibria here. Then what would you do? So, if there are two equilibria of this, say for example, out here, player, there was one equilibrium which is m followed by m and something, the other, there is another equilibrium which is r and something else. You have to replace something, right? Replace it with something. So, which of the two should I choose? I have to replace this whole yellow tree with, with one of these equilibria. So, if there are mul multiple equilibria, then which one should I be? Okay, what so what does that mean? Analyze both means? Okay. 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 So so what this means is essentially it means it would mean that from here onwards it is uh, it is indeterminate. There could be two potential equally ra equally rationalizable solutions that are available. So, but what do you do with the algorithm? What you need to do in that case, if you have multiple equilibria, you have to repeat the process with each. Okay, you pick one of them, do this replacement, and so on, and pro proceed backwards. See, when you replace, you have to replace with the payoff for this particular for that equilibrium. Okay, so for example, it could be that the two equilibria have the same action for player two, but the payoffs for all the players could for for the players could be different because others are playing something else, right? So you have to make sure you are picking the right payoff from here. Okay, so for example, if your equilibrium turns out to be this, then this is the payoff you have. m followed by whatever, then this is the payoff you need to list up after when you replace. Okay. Now, the, there could be another equilibrium in which there is m followed by something else, ok. That could be also be an equilibrium and in that case you, you put in this payoff, ok. So, you have to be rigorous about that, put in the payoff of that equilibrium. The equilibrium will be given by actions for this static game, ok. All right. So, if there are multiple, uh, if there are multiple equilibria, so if any static repeat process with each. for each equilibrium. Now, another subtlety here is I have since I have mentioned sub extensive form will be static and so on. So, you could also have degenerate sub extensive form. So, for example, the last acting player could have a singleton information set ok, which is this one. In which case you have to just replace that guy with his action ok. So, I, I it uh, should, should not be very hard to uh, say, but uh, this uh, to see, but that is essentially all you have to do. So, this is this is then a, a trivial sort of one player game for it. Is this clear? Ok. So, let me ask you one more thing. Now, if you look at the equilibria that come out of these games, what is peculiar about them? I mean, or rather, the equilibria that come out of this algorithm, what is peculiar about them? So, that is true, it is not being violated, but in fact it is being imposed recursively, right. So, you are at every sub extensive form or every you know small static game or you know maybe even at every singleton information that each player is acting ra rationally to the best of its capabilities. So, effectively uh, what is happening is a player is kind of is 
is not pre-committing to an action before an information set arises because he is committing to an action that is tuned to that particular information set. So, pre-committing to an action would be like you know uh, would be threat equilibria have this property that there, there is a pre-commitment right. You, you announce an irrational action at another information at an information set even before that information set actually gets there get, comes to that game and then in the process you ensure that the game does not reach that information set right. So, but in this case at every information set you are is being analyzed in its own right and uh, is being analyzed uh, and so every player is acting rationally at every information set not just in the game at a whole, as a whole. So, one way of interpreting the kind of the this out uh, the, the sort of outcome that we get from here is that a player is committing partially. So, he is committing only that part of the strategy which is relevant at that state. So, later information sets that come later are being committed to when they arise ok this is sort of a wait and watch type of uh, type of mode of play ok. So, this is what is called delayed commitment ok. So, the term used for this is so the, the, the sort of equilibria that we are getting are equilibria of the delayed commitment type. of the delayed commitment type. So, delayed commitment uh, essentially is uh, one way another way of saying it is that is you are making full use of the information that is coming up you are waiting to commit before uh, for you to have the waiting for you to have the information before you commit to an action. Is this clear? Okay. And again as I said there is no guarantee that delaying commitment is going to be beneficial or anything like that ok. We have seen an example before. So, this game we had seen in the previous class where uh, there were we saw that there are uh, this player 1 had uh, was playing first and player 2 had these 2 information sets marked in yellow and there were 2 equilibria that we could get. One equilibrium we got by uh, by doing this kind of uh, decomposition type analysis. We said we look at the left left hand side game solved it separately look at the right hand side game solved that separately and then that that gave us one uh, one equilibrium and remember the payoff there uh, the payoff there in this um, in that equilibrium was uh, what was it uh, yeah it's minus 1 for player 1 and my and 2 for player 0 okay, both players were minimizing but then there was also another equilibrium which ca which came about by player 2 committing to a common action at these two information sets by essentially by ignoring the information that was available right. So, that that was this other equilibrium that came about and that was this 0 comma minus 1 here player 2 is getting minus 1 and player 1 is getting 0 ok as compared to this one ok. The, so, the delayed commitment type 1 is this this boxed one here and the starred one here is the uh, was the one where where the player has pre committed to a pre committed to a strategy and you can see the commitment was for player 2 was just committing to play l2 at both nodes and effectively then he had converted that uh, that turns the game into a static uh, static game and so on okay so these are all things we had discussed uh, before so the uh, but the main lesson is commitment uh, it doesn't necessarily give you an advantage ok. There is no uh, 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 commitment or delaying commitment either of them does not necessarily give you an advantage ok. So, now let me uh, related to this let me ask you another question. So, suppose this suppose we are in a 0 sum game ok. Now, suppose we are in a 0 sum game now uh, so, 0 sum dynamic game ok. Now, and uh, we have 2 players 0 sum dynamic game is there any benefit to committing or delaying commitment? So, so there is something peculiar about zero sum games which is the following that all, 
all equilibria of zero sum games or all saddle points have the same value right all saddle points have the same value which means what which means now all these saddle points the delayed commitment type and the pre commitment type all of them can be found in the normal form of the game right you write out a big large normal form you will be able to find all of them and all of them have the same value which means the the delayed commitment equilibrium and the com and the commit and the pre commitment equilibrium or the threat equilibrium whatever you want to call it all of them have the same value they are all saddle points eventually of the of the normal form right which means that for a zero sum game this kind of you know pre committing giving or threat threatening threatening etc has no consequence the reason threats work is because the game is non zero sum okay threats threats work on the basic premise that i am going to do harm to myself but in the process i will do harm greater harm to you but in a zero sum game harm to me is always gain to you you cannot have this argument to, this argument simply cannot work okay so so a threat uh, uh, so 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 this this whole business of what order of commitment and so on and so forth is completely moot in a in a zero sum game because the both both players are just out to kill each other <laughs> okay you want to commit to killing yourself go ahead right i mean so this mutually assured destruction that kind of uh, paradigm just doesn't work in in a zero sum game all right now finally if you have a game which is um, which is nested but not ladder nested then essentially then from there it is not decom it means that that portion is not decomposable okay so you can what you can do is you can keep uh, so if you uh, so if so okay, i'll yeah yes they are all found uh, by uh, so 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 this the so the way the algorithm is defined it delays commitment to the maximum extent possible okay you can partially delay uh, like you can pre commit a little bit and partially delay it uh, the rest of it and so but here everything is delayed until the point where you encounter the information set okay so that those kind of equilibria are found through this yeah so so i was coming to that so in that case once if a tree is nested but not ladder nested if it's nested the question is firstly so nested doesn't mean that uh, um, uh, so if it's not ladder nested it could still have portions which are ladder nested so you could solve for those portions which are ladder nested so sub extensive forms which are lad not ladder nested eventually you get to a, sub a form which is what is called undecomposable it cannot be decomposed further and there then you write out the normal form and solve it uh, solve it through the normal form there is no other way beyond that okay all right so uh, but uh, now uh, related to this what uh, what shashank just asked i actually, actually this you use the word refinement and so let me mention that also here see so if the game is of perfect e information then an equilibrium can be found by backward induction that's what i said right and now what does this mean this gives you one corollary straight away actually exactly a, a game of perfect information always has an equilibrium in pure strategies because you can just find it by backward induction right you just every uh, you just keep going through the tree you will find one equilibrium okay so so the the static game which is the other extreme that may not have an equilibrium in pure strategies but this extreme where there is perfect information always uh, always has an equilibrium in pure strategies 
okay so uh, since i use the word refinement let me mention that so this whole act thing is what is called refining an equilibrium okay so refinement is essentially a sub what does this refer to so you so you can think of the solution concept or the nash equilibrium as something like this it's a it is a mapping okay uh, so suppose you have gamma is your class of class of games and for um, for every for every g in gamma you let s of g be the strategy space so a solution concept is a is basically a function is a phi that maps this to s where s is just some universal set which contains the strategies of all games okay such that phi of g belongs to s of g so it is picking for each game or let's say subset okay it's picking for each game a subset of the strategies for, from that game this is what a solution concept is okay this is a solution concept so nash equilibrium in particular is one kind of solution concept now what you can ask is well this is uh, so uh, this is uh, nash equilibrium is a solution concept you can of course have a trivial solution there always exists a trivial solution concept in which phi of g is equal to s of g right you just say that anything can happen the other extreme is where you want to go and say some exactly something specific is the outcome okay so that process is what is called refining an equilibrium so what you are looking for then is let's say phi tilde such that phi tilde of g is a subset of phi of g you have a solution concept and you want to refine it further ideally if phi if phi tilde gives you a single point for all g then that's great otherwise you it's at least giving you a subset okay so let me put this as a strict subset but the challenge in all of this is the following the more so this being a subset means that you are making the criterion stricter and stricter you are asking for you are demanding more and more from your solution right which means that you might end up demanding too much to the point where then fight it could you might end up demanding where to the point where phi tilde of g is empty uh, becomes empty becomes empty but phi of g is not empty so the original solution does exist but your highly demanding solution concept does not does not have a point satisfying it okay so the challenge in game theory is to actually come up with uh, in in refining is to come up with an argument or some uh, some axiom or some criterion under which you can refine the solution but not refine it to the point where it disappears is this clear okay so the this is basically the idea so in short what we want is that if in other words we want that if if the original one you want phi tilde to have, have this property if this is not empty then phi, then phi tilde should be not empty right so whenever the original exists the refined one should also exist okay now you can approach this mathematically by looking for what are called selections and so on or you can approach this uh, give some argument uh, you know some kind of a thought experiment some argument saying okay well what if this happened and then you try to refine it whatever this the whole all of that is uh, fair game but you come up with some argument okay to to uh, uh, to to make this work so if you want to know more about this the, uh, so you can read i have my uh, so i have a paper in 2012 automatica and that is about refinement of the equilibrium for a 
for a certain class of games. So, you can there the introduction I have described all this theory if you want if you are interested in this ok to, uh, to automatica is the name of the journal 2012 was when it was uh, uh, when it was published.